me go to Commissioner Peter John. Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, election Commissioner Layman. Um, I'd like you to, this has been a long meeting and I agree with a lot of the frustrations the chairman expressed concerning uh, the canvas, but it is open and, mm -hmm. and available to the public. You can watch us going through the process. Um, and have done it a number of times and it seems it's getting more difficult as the percentage of people taking advantage of mail ballots, I think, increases. Uh, but the equipment we're looking at here, the, the proposal before us, um, I believe this is in use elsewhere, and you saw that in Maryland. Which yes, we went and we, uh, my chief deputy and I traveled to Maryland and actually um, observed their presidential primary because they were rolling out the system statewide for the first time as a state. I think some smaller jurisdictions have used it, but this was the first time it had been used statewide. We went specifically before we made it, before we made up our minds, we wanted to be able to say that we had watched this system in action. We actually did see a couple, uh, one specific item that we have again, just like we addressed with the um, audible feedback on a tabulator, we found one thing that would significantly inc improve the process for shutting down the machines and reduce errors on the part of election workers. Addressed that with the ESNS and they're working on a, a fix for that too. But uh, yes, we did go to Maryland and observe their presidential primary. Are you still looking for election workers? We're always looking for election workers. Okay. <laughs> Never not. <laughs> uh, how many poll watchers or positions do you have open? Uh, I do not have poll watchers. I have election workers. Poll watchers or poll agents are assigned by candidates and parties and come observe us. I'm hiring election workers. Right now for the primary we have just a couple. We've been fully staffed over and over again and then people keep canceling. We're like our poor... Uh, we had a supervising judge that had a heart attack. Um, <laughs> but you, uh, so I think for the primary, we only have a couple positions, but for the general, we're still looking for a good 150, 200 people. 150 to 200 mm -hmm. election workers. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner, Zinni, Commissioner Norton. Well, I, I'm ready to vote on this today. I, I really appreciate Dr. Clarkson coming in here and the work she's doing. I think it's going to be paramount that we have comparative data to the next couple of elections. If it flattens out, it was an anomaly and we're not going to worry about it probably. If that trend continues that there's a spacing and uh, a, an advanced uh, graph that shows there's a differential somewhere, there needs to be more research and I agree there needs to be some audit. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I'm smart enough to know all of that, but I am so proud that we have people in our community that are scrutinizing our elections. Because if democracy doesn't work at the ballot box, it doesn't work anywhere else. That's right. I think our staff, both purchasing and the election office, have done yeoman's work trying to figure it out. I also believe that equipment is only as good as the user and the people that monitor it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to trust that our citizens will pay attention and learn how to use the new equipment and that our election staff will make sure that they know how to use it and that they audit themselves. Mm -hmm. And we do have citizens that volunteer, that mm -hmm. observe, and, and that work. So I'm ready to move forward. I think this is a better system. A lot of work has gone into it. I'm so, certainly no expert on election equipment, but the idea that there will be ability to have a paper ballot that you can audit and compare mm -hmm. is much improved to what we have. Had. I agree. And we've wrestled with this for many years. In fact, my first year as a commissioner, we wrestled with equipment and we're still thinking about it, trying to upgrade it, make sure that our elections are accurate and sound and uh, that we protect sensitive information. So. I'm ready to move forward on the recommendation today, but I would urge Dr. Clarkson and others to continue to do their work, monitor. I, I, I'm sad that we couldn't open up parts of the information to get that off the table, but that's the way. <laughs> I didn't rule on that. It's not, it's not within my purview. Uh, it's way above my station. Somebody else made that determination, so today I'm ready to move forward. And, Thank you for your comments, Commissioner. Uh, any other comments? Madam Clerk, we have a motion and a second. I'd like to make a motion we would accept the uh, Board of Bids and Contracts. And for clarity on the second item, does that also uh, make it clear that we are um, changing direction on the 
on the monitoring? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion we would, we would uh, uh, accept the uh, recommendation of the Board of Bids, bids and Contracts. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All right. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Commissioner Unruh? Aye. Commissioner Norton? Aye. Commissioner Peter John? Aye. Commissioner Ransall? Aye. Chairman Howell? Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. All right. um, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Consent agenda? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mike Scholes, County Manager, I recommend you approve consent agenda item Foxtrot. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Commissioner Enner? Aye. Commissioner Norton? Aye. Commissioner Peter John? Aye. Commissioner Ranzoff? Aye. Chairman Howell? Aye. All right, next item, please. Other? Oh, I'm sorry. Legislative issues? Commissioners, do we have anything for legislative issues today? Or counselor or anything for today? Good afternoon, Commissioners. John Monashen, Assistant County Counselor. I just wanted to um, follow up the discussion, the robust discussion that we had regarding the election uh, audit. Um, uh, we'll, re we'll revisit this when it comes time to do the legislative agenda for next year. But uh, we were in support of the audit bill in the House, um, and uh, there was a lot of support for that bill. It did not, I mean, it got, to, it got out of committee, but never got you know, out of the House. Um, so um, I think um, that's something we'll look at for next year. One of the other things that we identified in canvassing um, was a flaw in the mail ballot process uh, in which uh, individuals who are disabled who may require assistance there, we didn't, um, if they're unable to sign the, the envelope, then we couldn't even get in to count their, uh, their vote. So that may be something we might want to look at um, as a tag on to that process to try and make it easier for uh, disabled individuals who want to use that if they may be under a power of attorney and uh, allow for uh, their power of attorney to bring the ballot in with a copy of the power of attorney showing that the person actually, you know, that hey, this is their vote. We've, um, and they have the authority to sign for them even though they can't sign and that um, uh, the affidavit only says that that person would have assisted them, the person uh, uh, who is. Uh, the elector actually did vote. Um, so those would be a couple of items. And then I'd probably uh, tag on that would want to remind um, uh, everybody to make sure if you have questions to contact the election commissioner's office. She will answer those questions regarding those ballots. Um, and, and, and make sure that you read the instructions, whether it be at a polling place or on the ballot, um, because uh, part of the, the items that uh, I think show up in canvassing uh, some of the uh, voter error that does show up is because people have not taken the time to actually read the instructions. I appreciate your comments. And again, this issue of someone who uh, was able, unable to sign the envelope actually did happen. We had some someone who, who tried to vote that way and we couldn't verify the signature. And again, it seems reasonable with someone who is, is uh, paralyzed, for example, will not be able to uh, sign the envelope. So. It certainly is an issue we need to address. And if they were, if that individual were to appear at a polling place, we'd be able to accommodate them. But on the mail ballot, the the law is a little bit different and, and doesn't allow us for us to um, to have that 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 type of accommodation. Absolutely. And uh, can you can you? I believe on the legislative bill that we supported. Again, I think it was a very popular bill. I think people, I think bipartisan support for the idea of doing auditing, but. Bills that seem to have a lot of support get a lot of things attached to them, and I believe that's what happened this year. I believe there were other issues in the election committee that that got attached to the to the bill that would have allowed audits, and that that's what uh, potentially uh, causes caused this demise. It didn't make it through because of the other issues. That, that is correct, and 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 in the version that came out of committee, um, actually did have an amendment that, that Sedgwick County would be for 2016 allowed to do audit. And then uh, it would be statewide in 2017. So uh, obviously, um, next session we would be looking at uh, making it a, a statewide uh, issue. And then, um, you know, having them look at the the bill as proposed would have been a, a sample of certain precincts by the Secretary of State's office. Um, you know, that's that's one option. There are other options that that we could um, that we could support or or even possibly 
um, help draft. Very good. All right, Commissioner, anything else for legislative issues? All right, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Other? Commissioners, what do you have for other today? Commissioner Norton. I, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that we're real proud of Exploration Place. They got a $1.25 million grant from NASA to finish the design bill fly aviation center, and that will upgrade Exploration Place. They're really world class. It was one of only nine science centers in the nation that got part of this grant money, and it'll uh, allow them to finish up a major portion of the remodel of Exploration Place and upgrading their mission. So, very proud of them applying, and then they got it. So. Good job. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Peter John. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd be remiss if I didn't point out a couple of things. Uh, this morning, according to the data we have, uh, the sheriff in the sheriff's custody, there were 1,395 prisoners, and I think that's significant in terms of numbers we've had in the past. I'd also be remiss if I didn't point out that July 13th is an important day in American history, uh, particularly for those who look at some of our first principles on July 13th, 1787, under the Articles of Confederation, which we were operating under before the Constitution was adopted, Congress enacted and much vilified Articles of Confederation. The Northwest Ordinance was a, when enacted, and the Northwest Ordinance basically set up the rules for government of a huge region, it's then called the Northwest Territories, what we'd call today the modern states of Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, Wisconsin, and part of Wisconsin, I'm sorry, part of Minnesota. And what's significant about this ordinance was the Northwest Ordinance, in terms of the treatment of religion up until that time, there were a lot of state churches and certain denominations were affiliated with certain states, and that was the state church. Uh, but the Northwest Ordinance said no person uh, shall be molested on account of his mo mode of worship or religious sentiments in the Northwest Territories, and that was a revolutionary idea at that time. Also, it played a key role in that slavery was banned in that area, and uh, of course that had huge implications. We, in those early days, there was talk about uh, eliminating slavery much more broadly than occurred, and there were some close votes on it. But Northwest Ordinance uh, moved us uh, in a big direction, big direction in the right way in a number of points. And July 13th is an important day in American history, and just wanted to get that on the record. Thank you. All right, Commissioner, is there anything else for other today? All right, I believe we're at the end of the agenda. The only thing that's left is executive session, which we do not have today. And before we dismiss, Commissioner, is there anything else you want to bring up before we dismiss or adjourn? All right. Seeing none, Mr. Manager, anything today? That's it. All right. Well, we're at the at the end of the agenda, so we're adjourned. Thank you very very much.